let's just ask you about the election. You okay. know, there will be a, a Republican primary within a year or so, and there are people that have already declared, including President Trump, Nikki right. Haley, and there's others that probably will run, including Mike Pompeo and Mike Pence. So yeah, maybe yeah. maybe go through um, some of those individuals in the Republican primary, and give me your you know thirty second assessment of each of them. And okay. you're you, the first person that's asked feel. me this. It, it's it is early, but it's not early. Like it's really like, not. I think no. people are seeing how much the country's in trouble because of just just two years of Biden are really worried, and they expected a Republican you know tsunami, a red tsunami last November and, and they didn't get it. So now, and you know what, people must be really concerned if they're asking me from all the way over here, but Donald Trump, I love the guy. He's incredible. He did, he, nobody was more pro-Israel than Donald Trump. Okay, so that's good. Um, I don't think he can win in 2024. He has disaffected so many Republicans. I'm not even talking about Democrats and independents. I'm saying the split in the party is so deep now because of January 6th. And he's delivering for evangelicals like, off the charts, mm -hmm. most pro-Israel president in history, and the most pro-life president. And he was a guy who was for partial birth abortion in the 90s. So True. what a conversion, right? Yeah. So it was phenomenal. But he basically imploded mm. on January 6th, or leading up to in that day. And that that's sad, because his record was so good that if he just said, they took the election from me, but I'm coming back, yeah, he would have had the, United, the, the Republican Party unify behind him and you know, I think he would have had a clear shot. Now, I don't think he can win the general election. He could still win the, 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 the primary. So that's Trump. That was in 30 seconds. Sorry. <laughs> Let's go on. Uh, who's declared? Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley, super pro-Israel. I think she got out of the uh, Trump administration too early. I think she bailed. She has a very compelling personal story. She, uh, she was a governor, you know, twice elected, didn't fill out, fill out the full term because, uh, the second term because she became the ambassador to the UN, UN. But she's got a great story and she's, a, she's an excellent communicator and she loves Israel. So on the Israel side, so far, we're good. Trump, good. Um, Haley, good. Um, Mike Pence, I think, is the next one you have to take seriously because even though Trump went after him, um, he went after him on, the, on, on a one position that any vice president, any, any political leader in, on the conservative side w would want to be attacked on. You're, you're saying I wasn't strong enough in standing on the Constitution. <laughs> like I was on that ticket too. If, if, if it was just as easy as saying oh, we're the winners, then, then Pence would be in. And I think the problem with Trump's logic on this and where, where Pence is right, I mean, that may not be, I don't know what you're your viewers, so they may hate me for this, but Pence was right. He didn't have any constitutional authority to just say, you know, no, I, I decertify these I, electors. It's just, yeah. And if he does, if he did, then did Al Gore have the same authority in 2000 when George W. Bush won by, what, 575 votes or whatever it was in Florida? Al Gore was the vice president. Could he go, nope, it's me. Nobody on the Republican, conservative, evangelical side believes that. So if Gore didn't have that authority, why did Pence? Because maybe we wanted him to be able to say it, but he stood on the, con constitu the Constitution and it cost him. But it also defined him mm -hmm. as a man of faith and a man of principle, a man willing to fight even if it was at his own personal expense. That's pretty impressive as a believer. It's pretty impressive in politics. You usually don't see that. Um, Pompeo is a very impressive guy, um, as impressive as Pence, but he, but Pence has an advantage over Pompeo. Why? Well, not just because they have the same name, Mike, so that doesn't mean, <laughs> and their both last names start with a P, so that's, they're similar. But um, Pompeo is from a small congressional district in Kansas, um, so, and then he became CIA director, and he was probably the best CIA director we've ever had. Um, but nobody knew what he was doing, right? Because it was all secret, right? And then he became Secretary of State where 90% of his time was outside of the country. So the people that know Mike Pompeo have watched him are super impressed. Every time I go to an event and he's speaking, people go, man, I had no idea. Wow. Yeah. Super smart, strong Christian. He doesn't have a national organization. So what he would need if he gets in, and I think this is, I think this is a challenge for him, is he'll need a group of billionaires and gazillionaires who decide they're going to create a, you know, $200 million super PAC 
to get behind him because I don't see how he builds a national organization in time. Yeah. And he's great, but he doesn't have the winsome personality. He's not sort of like Pence. He's he's a Midwestern nice guy, strong, but not flashy, not sort of, you know. So Nikki Haley has the jump on them. And of course, Trump, Trump obviously, the most charismatic of all. Tim Scott, very interesting. Only African-American in the United States Senate, South Carolina, raised by, you know, a poor single mom. His story is so awesome, a strong believer. If he really gets in, he's going to be a fascinating guy to pay attention to. And um, I, think, uh, I think he could do well even without a national organization. But in the end, why did Nikki Haley get out early to build a national organization? Now, there's others, but let me mention the big kahuna, which Ron would be Ron DeSantis. DeSantis. Yeah. Ron DeSantis fascinates me. Haven't met him. I've met all of the rest. Well, I haven't met Nikki. Um, very short on Ron DeSantis. He's the one that's showing people are moving to him. He's been an incredible governor. I mean, he took, I mean, Florida, we just mentioned George W. Bush winning by, you know, less than 600 votes 20 years ago, 23 years ago. He, DeSantis wins by 19. He has ta he's taken a, a, a purple state, right, a mixed red-blue, and turned it bright red. Like, how is that even possible? I don't know. <laughs> Very impressive. The, the question about DeSantis right now is, is he Rick Perry? Now, I like Rick Perry, who is the governor of Texas. Uh, he's, uh, Rick Perry's a reader of some of my novels, so I'm very happy about that. But Rick Perry was a great governor of Texas, but when he entered the Republican uh, race in 2016, his n no numbers were very high, but they sank. He didn't know how to translate statewide politics onto the national scene, and he stumbled, sure. and people, people bailed on him. Mm -hmm. Could DeSantis do the same? We don't know, right? Um, but, he, but DeSantis was also a congressman, so he, he, he knows national politics. Is he ready for the rough and tumble? Is he ready to go mano a mano with Trump? It's, I, I don't know, but it's going to be fun to watch.